Hey guys, it's MC Fix It here. We have this 2006 Honda Ridgeline with a check engine light on. You can see it right there. And we're gonna go ahead and diagnose the problem, fix the problem, and then reset the code. I'm gonna walk you through all the tools, the supplies, and the know-how on how you can do this on your Ridgeline or similar makes and models like the Pilot and the Odyssey. So let's go ahead and uh, get a OBD2 scan tool. There are lots of them available. This is one of my favorite ones, relatively cheap. And then I got uh, this one a while ago on Amazon or on eBay. And uh, this one's a really cheap one. This one is much, much better. Um, gives you a lot more details. And I think it's easier to work as well. So we'll be using this one. It is an Innova 5210 version number one and the engine is running. So the next step is to go ahead and go underneath and find your OBD2 uh, scan part. And so you gotta come down here and feel around for it and it plugs right in just like that. And so this is just to the right if you have this exact vehicle as me. Uh, there's a couple of little holes here. Please forgive my floors, it's gross. It is winter time and uh, everything gets nasty out here so it will take a few seconds to go ahead and begin to read whatever the code is so this is a p2251 and it is an oxygen sensor an air fuel sensor and the important thing is this b1s1 so that's bank one sensor one uh, you have to make sure you get the right one because there are two banks and there are two sensors a total of four actual sensors but that's the locations of them and so we will need to change out the o2 sensor fuel air fuel sensor b1 s1 and i'll show you where that's at and i'll kind of show you where the other ones are as well um, and you can scroll down it just kind of shows you what's going on um, to repair i've had this for a probably about a hundred miles because I've it's been like negative 34 degrees is a really warm day today so I'm gonna go ahead and take advantage of that um, here are the tools and the supplies that I used I used the NTK and this is a 24302 this is for an 06 Ridgeline bank one sensor one oxygen sensor uh, a couple of extensions so this is a three and a six inch and this is like the loaner, loaner kit tool you can get at advance and so I just used the smaller one which is a 7 8 and then I used two extensions in it I did need a breaker bar to get it started I tried to use a uh, just a regular ratchet didn't work well you want a flathead to get those three bolts off on the front of your vehicle that hold down their plastic screws really uh, that hold down the plastic piece on front of your engine cover uh, then a torque wrench uh, then I used that breaker bar and I did have to go down a size so uh, three th one half to three eighths um, just worked perfect for this gave me enough torque that I needed without really getting down there and busting some knuckles so go ahead and use a cheater breaker bar that's a 24 inch works really well one other thing uh, inside does have some anti-seize so you will not need to purchase any of that it's already loaded on there make sure you take the plastic cover off but that's what the pin should look like too you can go ahead and turn off your vehicle at this point and we're going to come down here to the hood release and pop open the hood and begin the process so go ahead and get your hood there's a little latch right here that comes up uh, then you're going to go ahead and take this and go ahead and put it in here and that will help hold your hood up and that location is right there where we held our hood up. So like I mentioned, there are technically four sensors. Uh, you have bank one, uh, sensor one, bank two, sensor one. So this one's the really easy one to get to, which would be really great to show you the video on the bank two sensor one. Uh, then down below the catalytic converter, uh, bank one, sensor two, uh, then bank two, sensor two is on this side. So kind of goes back and forth. So so to begin to get to uh, bank one, sensor one, you're gonna have to go ahead and take off this beautiful plastic piece. And I do believe most of mine are broken by now. So I don't even know which ones are holding it on. I've done lots of repairs on this. Yeah, you can see that one's the one that's busted off. So you just quarter turn those and remove that. And again, if it was 
that sensor, it'd be so easy to show you how to do, but we're way back in the back here. So I'm gonna do my best to give you the best video possible, but it's gonna be the same process for this one up here, but that one's still good. So they cost about 130 bucks. So I'm not gonna replace that one as well. So I'm gonna show you on the front side what you need to do. It's really important that you kind of see it because you're not gonna be able to on the back side. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your tool, weed the cable through there and then break the nut. It does take some force, a breaker bar is helpful. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and do the clip, right here's the clip on the front side, but on the back side, the clip is at a different angle. It's at this angle right here. You're gonna go ahead and press the centerpiece and pull and press at the same time. This does require two hands. And so you gotta reach over it. It could be hot, your engine block, let it cool. If it's cool enough, but it's a little warm, you can put a towel on it and do it. Uh, then once you've done that, you go ahead and remove the uh, entire O2 sensor out. There is anti-seize already on there. So when you put it in, tighten it down, it will allow you to uh, do that. Uh, then you're gonna go ahead and click that sensor in once you got it tightened down to spec. So what I'm going to do is use that uh... 7 eighths. I'm going to use the smaller one because it allows a 3 eighths ratchet to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't fall down. Do make sure you have the end that has the bolt on that. And then you're just going to find that cord and then slowly get it into position. I tried to use a ratchet but it did not work. So I'm going to use a breaker bar. I'm going to use a breaker bar with another 3 inch extension. So once you got that broke, we do need to get the um, harness off and the harness is sitting up like this. So you will have to pinch the top of it and pull down, which is kind of hard to do uh, given its location. And so you really need two hands, make sure your engine is cooled down um, or else you can't burn yourself pretty easily. You can also throw a towel over it like this. This is probably the most difficult part. You have to press down the connector and push down at the same time. Oh, got it. Man, that was hard. I will uh, show you on the front side what I did. And then because I broke this, now you can just normally spin it off by hand. And just like that, it is off. And one thing I always like to do is look at the difference between the two of them. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure this still has the cap on it. So we'll carefully remove that. But you will wanna make sure they are pretty much identical sizes. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that these look identical as well. They are both five pins. So we're ready to go. Um, that one's pretty crusty. And obviously that's the new one um, that's pretty worn down. That's been in there for 250,000 miles and that one's about to go in. So we're gonna put this in hand tight. We're gonna spin it down. Don't plug this in, in yet. We wanna spin this down, spin it in. And then we're gonna go pretty much a quarter torn or 33 foot pounds is what Honda actually recommends. Um, if you read the NTK instructions, it tells you that it is uh, finger tight than a half to three quarter turn with wrench with O2 so socket, which is about 33 foot pounds, so perfect. Make sure not to drop your oxygen sensor because um, it can break the filament inside of it. Uh, do not let it get wet. Do not let grease get on it. In fact, I'm going to find the hole with my other hand and then slowly begin to spin it in. And I'm holding the top end 
So as it spins, and this already has anti-seize lubricant on it. Thank you, NTK, for putting that on there. Just nice when they do that, because that's how they should. And you do have to get it seated right for it to spin in. And since you can't see it, you're just gonna careful, 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 go around and get that thing to seat in there properly. And then it should start to catch. It may take a little bit of time for it to, to get in there. So that right there is hand tight now. And I have 33 foot pounds on my wrench. I'm gonna go ahead and set this in on top of it. Again, I'm sorry for the bad camera views. There's not a lot I can do about that. This is a very limited workspace. Right there's it. You just go till it clicks. Again, you can use the other method, but uh, I like to torque everything down. If you have the tools, torque it down. Uh, then this will plug up in. You do wanna make sure this part is on the outside. So you're gonna to have to find where that plugs in at. and make sure it's fully plugged in, just like so. Let's put a cover on. And this one's broke, but I'll still kind of put it in. So I'll go ahead and start it up. Typically this doesn't normally clear any check engine lights. So you will need that scan tool. We'll go ahead and plug it in real quick. So we still have the same uh, codes. So we're gonna go to erase. I then go ahead and hit enter. So erase is the big red button. Press the enter button. It'll take a few seconds to erase these. Erase request has been sent. So you can go ahead and turn off the vehicle. So we're gonna go ahead and turn the car on, but not start the car, just till the ignition is on. Go ahead and plug in your cable. Take a few seconds to go through the process. Look at the check engine light as this processes. And then now it has no codes found. And if you look up here also, there is no check engine light on anymore. It was living right down there before. So we'll go ahead and start it up and just check to make sure it really did clear it. And we look good. We're back in business and uh, hopefully that helps you. If you do have any comments, go ahead and put them in the comment section down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Have a great day.